All right, you guys, so I'm currently set up to do a remote online closing. This is a seller's um, loan closing. It's my very first time doing a loan package online, but I'm excited. So I want to just um, show you guys how it goes today. All right, so unfortunately, we were unable to get this transaction going because the signer, um, there was two signers. One of the signers failed the kba portion of the identifying process kba is basically like four questions that they ask you like have you ever known this person have you ever lived at this address type of questions um so she won't be able to do that for another 24 hour period <sighs> so i had to get on a call with title right now but they were really understanding because they've um gone through this before so they were just kind of wondering like you know this this is um something that that uh, happened just recently um, so they wanted me to explain like what was the KBA um, and why it failed so one second I'm gonna answer this so let's see what happened hello this is Adriana speaking hey yes yes Yes, I did. Um, uh, she wanted to know what exactly the KBA was because they've already had an issue like that before. Um, so I did explain it to her. So unfortunately, she failed the KBA identifying portion of it. So, and the system doesn't let her log on again until 24 hours from now. Oh, okay. Okay. So when um, a signer is going to do a, a remote online notarization, the system is going to ask them for their first name, their middle name, their last name, and the last four of their social and their birthday. And then it'll ask them about four questions and the system uses that as a way to identify that the signer is who they say that they are. So um, it might ask them like, do you, have you ever known this person? Have you ever lived at this address um, type of questions? And she. Um, maybe she failed one or two questions on there. So um, that's the KBA portion of it and she didn't pass it. So unfortunately, um, yeah, yeah, unfortunately she won't be able to do it until 10, 14 tomorrow and I have 3.05 a.m. But 3.05 a.m. for me, <laughs> um, that's not doable. I could do like, 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. Um, if they still need me to to sign it but I don't, I'm not sure if you want to coordinate that with them or if you want me to reach out to Sabrina okay so I just finished talking to the um, signing company they were actually really appreciative um, you know because Ron is such a new thing so they're still still learning about like what KBA is um, how to do things so I think I just landed um, a signing service that will be coming to me for all their signings that's what they said so i'm looking forward to it and i'm just so grateful and thankful that um as nervous as i was to do a loan closing online i i said i i'm gonna do it i'm gonna try it i have to give it a shot or else i'm never gonna know what it feels like to do a, a loan signing um remotely and I mean, I'm glad, even though it didn't completely go through. And I'm also now in contact with Sabrina at, um, she's an escrow officer at a title company. And so I'm, I'm really thankful for the experience that I just went through right now, so. Good morning, everyone. It's Friday morning. My camera decided to just die on me in the middle of my conversation, but it's Friday morning. It's 6.24 in the morning, and I was preparing to do a signing remotely at 8 a.m., but I came across my very first issue with remote online notarizations. And I wanted to, you know, just share it with you guys. There's two signers. The husband um, and the wife were selling a property here in Texas to their daughter. And first, the wife was unable to pass her 
her KBA. KBA is the knowledge-based authentication portion of the identifying process, right? Because there, things are done remotely, you know, it's virtually. Um, so there's certain regulations and guidelines in place for um, a remote online notarization, right? So the wife at first failed her KBA. And so what happens is I use Notarize because it's a free platform. It's the only one I found so far that doesn't charge me like a setup fee or um, a monthly fee or any sort of fees for me to bring on my own clients. <sighs> she failed it and I was like, okay, like what do I, what do I do now? She's locked herself out for 24 hours. That's just how it works. The system's not gonna let her log on for another 24 hours and do the identifying process again. So then get this, <laughs> this morning, um, we were supposed to redo the session once the 24 hour period was done. Um, the 24 hour period was going to be done at 3.14 in the morning. And I was like, okay, like I can't be up at 3.14 to do a remote session, but I'll be up at, you know, 7, 8 a.m. So I'm like getting ready to, um, to do this. I had already like tagged everything online and it's super easy. I'll show you guys like a demo on how I did that. And then at 3.15 in the morning, I get an email that the mister <laughs> locked himself out for 24 hours now. And like I said, there's two sellers on there. So they both have to sign. Um, they both have to be on there. Um, so unfortunately, I had to send a message to the escrow officer at the title company. And then I'm going to log on to signingorder.com right now and I'm going to update it so that they know <sighs> I mean and this is stuff that like we have no control over as the remote um, online notary like there's nothing that we could do about it we can't answer those questions for them like that's you know and there's no loopholes for this um, maybe if I had another platform that I would use um, but I don't have one and it's not something that's like I can just It's not like a five-minute process where I can find another platform sign up for it and use it within five ten minutes it takes um, a while like for the Platform to verify your credentials and like do all that and yeah, it's just it's just the whole thing um, But I'm learning along the way because this is the very first loan closing that I was about to perform remotely and I was very excited about it you know it's technical stuff that I have no control over I just updated signingorder.com and I sent over the um, note to the signing service I had already emailed um, the escrow officer via email since we were in contact she did let me know like you know I've had this issue before um, with someone else and um, I'm just trying to see like how you know like how can we avoid that and it's like we can't because we can't answer the questions for the signers and it's just it's part of the process for performing a, a ron session so those are just like the rules that the state um and not just texas but other states have also like put in place this is what they've agreed on like you have to have um uh, a platform to use and that platform has to be able to, to has to be able to perform an identifying process um, and that includes KBA which is knowledge-based authentication it's just something that's like it's out of our hands there's nothing we can do about it um, what I am trying to do right now is maybe finding one more platform that I could use because there's fees associated with you know like I'm getting charged um, how many times I'm using my seal, how many documents I'm uploading, how many signers, um, how long is the session. And I mean, all of this is still like fairly new to me. So yeah, even the setup fees are looking like more than a hundred, two hundred dollars. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm, you know, like there yet because I haven't got like personal
clients um, that have requested um, remote online notary sessions and this yesterday Thursday was the very first remote online notary session that I was requested to do via a signing service I'm just kind of like I'm trying to see what's the, the smartest move for my business right now because I feel like my remote business is still a startup business even my loan signing um, part of things like I'm I'm in Texas now so I am starting like from the bottom again and so I feel like in both aspects of the of my notary business like I'm still a startup I'm I'm still you know down here and so obviously coming over here I didn't need to invest in like for my loan signing I didn't need to invest in a printer right in a scanner I have those things that I was able to bring but for the remote part of things I know that I'm gonna have to invest in a platform I'm just trying to find the right platform where I can bring in my clients even through like a, a signing service and um, and not be charged so much so let me go over the fee that I got um, offered for this so it was a seller's package two signers um, 25 pages and I had to notarize I want to say it's between five and seven but it wasn't a lot and um, I had to drop off the documents I didn't see that portion of it um, after I did see scan backs but I honestly thought like oh okay they're probably referring to like me downloading the documents once the session is done and sending it via email like by attaching it as a pdf right but that's not what they were referring to they wanted me to print the documents the 25 pages um with the notary seal on there and all the signatures on there that were done electronically um and they sent me a FedEx label and they wanted me to drop it off at FedEx before the next pickup time. For all of those tasks, um, they were offering me $30, which wasn't a lot. But when I saw it come through, I was like, okay, like I'm, um, I'm ready to go right now. You know, I can, I can start the session right now and it said ASAP to be done. So I was like, okay, like I have time right now. And, um, if I get it, I get it. Um, so I pushed accept. And I really wanted to get myself like uncomfortable because that's the only way you're gonna grow, right? Like I've been so curious to see like, how would a remote loan signing look like um, since I hadn't done one yet, you know? I've, um, I've done the, the regular like general one, but I hadn't got one through a signing service or through a direct client. So I was very curious to see how it would work, how it would look like. So I did it mostly for the experience. I was like, okay, you know, $30, I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to, you know, drop off anything. A little did I know that they were asking me to drop it off at a FedEx location. But um, anyways, now I know the next time um, if they're asking for um, anything like that, I will definitely ask for a higher fee. I think $30 is a little too low when they're asking me to drop off the package and print out documents. But if those two things were not asked for and I was just performing it online, I, I yeah, I would do it for 30 bucks because I don't have to go anywhere. And like I said, I'll show you guys how the whole like process looked like. Um, uploading the documents to the platform flagging everything like sending it off to the signer and and all that and i'll show you guys how that looks like so stay tuned thank you guys for watching and i hope you guys have a great friday stay blessed and don't give up on your business i'll talk to you guys very soon bye